for me. Now, is he for us now, you guys? I mean, what's, what the heck is going on here? You know? What is going on? And he swears up and down. Oh, it was just coincidence. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, is, is it a coincidence, really, that you're with all of these people? And you know the people in Watergate, and you know the people that are um, in the movie Casino. I don't know if y'all have seen it. It's an older movie, uh, a Martin Scorsese movie. Yeah. And he bragged to me that he knew all those people personally in that movie. I, I don't know. Is he just one of those people like Roger Stone that likes to promote himself? Or is there much more to him? Now, in much of my research, I had found that Patsy Swank, who was a reporter for Look Magazine and had done a big article on them in 65, she had told people that he had told her that he worked for the CIA. I asked him that, and he said no, and just laughed in my face. But she had also mentioned that he had told her that he had the truth and it put it in three separate bank uh, uh, safety deposit boxes that would be open until after he was gone. I don't know how much truth there is to that. I don't, I don't, I don't think there was any, honestly. Because I asked him about that too, and again, he laughed. Um, he's older now, and he's got Parkinson's disease, uh, and he's in really ill health. Not that I'm in the greatest of health, but he's in worse health than I am. And, um, there's just more to him. He has gotten to that point in his life where he's got grandchildren. And they are involved in the military. And he doesn't want them to look at him and think that he was this bad guy. I mean, he wants them to look at him as this wonderful grandfather who did his patriotic duty and was. So there's a lot of that hubris, I should say, um, grandfatherly hubris, that is keeping him from saying things that I mean, I think that he would, you know? When I asked him, you know, Dick Russell wrote in The Man Who Knew Too Much, he wrote that Larry Schmidt and his brother Robbie shot at General Walker with a hot ball. I, I don't believe that one iota, one at all. And especially after doing the research for this book. The, the, so, uh, the uh, question is about the Walker assassination yeah. attempt. Yeah? It's very hard. It's very hard to pinpoint this actually on Lee Oswald. The only thing that speaks for Oswald's guilt, so-called guilt, is Marina Oswald's testimony five months later for the Warren Commission. Other than right. that, there is a lot of actually contradictory evidence and sightings and uh, witness statements that basically point to two people instead of one person, uh, that they went away in a car and so forth. Can you tell us a little bit about this? I, I don't, it, okay, I, I have two theories, and notice I'm saying theory, it doesn't mean truth, okay, it's theory. I have, thank you here, I have two theories, um, one is that, that and I, you guys might get really upset with me when I say this, but one theory is that I believe that Oswald was working with General Walker and Surrey and those guys, I, I, I do think so, I, I mean, um, if you look, he's noticed in his um, notebook, he has numbers that he can relate, he knows those guys, and that's one theory that I have. So, was Walker doing his normal, uh, wanting to be in the public eye, the Trump-like stuff? I mean, is that what he was doing? I, and he used Oswald and Surrey to do that, was he? Or, my second theory is that, um, again, Oswald knew these people, and this was pre-set up. But I don't. That one I don't think is true because no one mentioned that Oswald was the um, made an assassination attempt on Walker until after the assassination. I mean, then why? It, why wasn't it said before? You know what I mean? I mean, why wasn't there any indication before? And Marina. Uh, I, Marino was just trying to stay in America, if you ask me. I, I mean, in, in Dallas, yeah. you know? Yeah. And of course, she had Ruth Hayden helping her on. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, now you're asking me, do I think Oswald was there? Maybe, maybe. I mean, there was enough evidence to show that, I, that maybe, but do, it, I, do I think that he was trying to shoot at Walker to actually kill him? No. I, I, I Do I think that it didn't even take a shot? No. I, I just think 
that they all knew each other. I do. I, I believe that even more so now after writing this book. Right. So. Okay. Now um, the other. I don't know if that was a help. No, that's cool. Um, the other interesting person in this book is Robert Surrey, the Surrey family. Can you hear me? Okay, let's try that again. Can you tell us about the Surrey family? Oh, Robert Surrey. My goodness. I, we all know this. We all know Madame New, Madame the Dragon Lady. Do y'all know about her? No. Okay. She was the sister to the um, Vietnamese president. Any of you guys? Y'all know? Um, Robert Surrey's wife met her at the airport in 63 and their daughter presented her roses. Now, how, how does the, the printer for General Walker, <laughs> his aide de camp's wife, meet a diplomat at the airport and present her roses? How, how did they all, how did that happen? I, I mean, it's not like she was an important junior leader um, diplomat in Dallas. I mean, but there she was, I, I meeting with them. That, that's one thing that's always bothered me. But Robert Surrey, y'all, oh my God, it, it is so, uh, I, I don't even know, again, where, where to. Start at the beginning. Where to, <laughs> <laughs> Robert Surrey took, pled the fifth, how many times in the Warren Commission? Over 50? I mean, how many other people did that at the Warren Commission? But Robert Surrey did it. Um, he was the American Nazi secretary, I mean, he, he, he was for the Nazi party in, in, in America, and from what his sons tell me, that was the falling out between Walker and Surrey was because of his Nazi leanings. I, I don't know. Um, his wife was one of those women um, who pushed their husbands to do their bidding that make it look like it's the husband's idea. Uh, my dad always said that was the smartest thing a woman can do. I don't know. I, I don't do that with my husband, I, I, so I don't know. Um, but Robert Surrey, I believe, and again, I notice I'm saying believe and it's a theory, worked for an intelligence agency. That's what I believe. And I say that because in talking to his son, he told me that after they moved, after, and right after George Lincoln Rockwell was assassinated, or killed, killed himself, um, <clears throat> the lady that, that bought their home was not, could not move into the home for two weeks later because the FBI came in to get their electronic buggy equipment out. So, I sent a request, an FOIA request, asking for that information if there were if there were bugs there then that means there were tapes there and that would be great to hear because they were there for years which means the fbi would have been listening to the nazi meetings they would have been listening to the john birch meetings and they would have all kinds of data and all kinds of evidence um the series after they left dallas went off to florida no one even knew where they were for a couple of years and they showed up again in Florida when they owned a health store, a health food store. And in fact, their eldest daughter, Robert Surrey's stepdaughter, still runs that store. And when I spoke to her about her handing flowers to Bad New and about her dad being in the Nazi party, I mean, she didn't want to be on record and she didn't want to be a part of this book. But the Surrey sons were more than willing to talk about everything that they knew. And the most outrageous story, I, 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 I vacillated, I mean, should I add this to the book, should I check this out, was that when they were small, when they were younger, they would go with General Walker and their dad and Lee Harvey Oswald out to a rural area of Dallas and shoot, I mean, just shoot their guns. And their jobs as kids were to pick up the cartridges. They go, this is Texas. There's not really a need to be picking up cartridges, okay? Everybody and their brother has, has a rifle and a gun. It's true. I, I mean, we don't have one, but I mean, most everyone does. And they definitely did in the 60s. And I thought it was so strange. I was like, what? 
What, what do you mean you're not shooting? And are you sure it was Lee Harvey Oswald? And are you sure? Oh, well, most definitely. And we went to his house, and we went to the, el the elder Surrey's son, I think, was confused, and of course he was dying. I, I, um, but he talked about um, Lee Harvey Oswald's wife, Martina, and said he had played with Lee Harvey Oswald's son. Well, I mean, we know that there wasn't a son, and his wife's name was not Martina. But that, that's what he said. And I've got all of that on tape, you guys. If, if y'all want to be a, a, on my email list, and if you'll email me after this, I'll send you a copy of the video so you can see them yourself. So you can see what I saw the first time going, what, what? I mean, because there's craziness out there. There's people who say that they knew things about the Kennedy assassination, you research it, it's not true. I mean, you can't find evidence. And so <clears throat> when I started writing about this story and researching it, I was trying to figure out if these guys were telling the truth. And I tell you, I found more truth than I found mistakes. So it's very, very interesting. Robert Surrey is much more important to the JFK story than most people know. I, I, am I boring you guys? No, not at all. Not at all. We're listening. We're all in awe. I'm actually like the night back there in the black earth. Don't you like it? No, it's all cool. Can you get another beer? Come on. Come on. Anyway, does anybody have a single malt scotch? That's my friend. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> okay, can we talk? That's, that's what I. That's what I'd be happy to here. Can we talk about the Cuban element in Dallas, Chapter Six in your book? Martin, this keep breaking up. I, Sorry. Just hold up. I guess. Tell us. Tell us. It's like it's like beatboxing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the connection. Just to see. Tell us about the Cuban element in Dallas. This is the session. The Cuban element in Dallas. The Cuban element in Dallas, right? Yes, yes, yes. Tell us. Father McCann. The, uh, Father McCann was the um, head of the Dallas Catholic Cuban Society, refugee group. And so he took the confessions of the um, Catholic Cubans that were in his parish, which there were many. And guess who else was in his parish, y'all? Yes. James Hosting. Huh. I didn't impress all of that. Yeah. Y'all didn't think that was cool? Yeah. Hosty. Hosty. I, I, I mean, and you know what? When, um, I hear I'm going off track. You're asking about the Cuban element. Yes. Um, but, when, but when I asked Father McCann about the FBI guys and the uh, Secret Service guys who came to see him, he said they didn't come see me. It was James Hosty. I, really? I mean, I think that that's really important. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I do. I, I just think. You know, and Hosty was, was, well, Pitt Jones says, was bridge partners with Surrey. So there you got, see, look, there's connections. See, you got Surrey, Hosty, McCann, and the anti castro Cubans. They were a big group in Dallas. They're, um, Bob McCann said that, that their wealthier ones, like Sylvia Odio, which, by the way, I want to share this with y'all while I'm thinking about it. Look, can you see that? You see it? Yeah. 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 There's Sylvia Odio. Look, you mm -hmm. know when this was published? Do you know when she wrote it? No. 2014. Wow. Mm. And I can't find her. I, I called the publisher. I called the printer trying to get in touch with her to talk to her about this book, and I just couldn't do it. But 